Hello, this is Bunting, and in this video, I share with you forbidden sound design techniques. And such techniques lie under this commonly overlooked advanced tab in Vital with these unison modes, which you can use to create really unique sounds like these. <laughs> Plus a little bonus here. Cool. As always, if you want to gain instant access to all the presets I've made here, plus this entire project file, those are all posted on the Patreon, along with all my other videos if you'd like to support me there. That'll be in the description, along with a link to Flux, which is my new tune. If you like what you hear, check it out. I really appreciate that. Before I break down all these patches I made here, I'm going to start off by opening an initialized patch and tell you what the unison mode is about. Also, for future videos, drop some suggestions in the comments, whether it's sound design, artist, style, blah, blah. Okay, unison. What the heck is a unison? How does it make my sounds fat? So, unison modes, you can start off right here by dragging up these voices. You've probably done this before, but this is as far as you've went. Of course, I don't know you like that, but I do know what these unison modes do is basically stack up multiple voices, multiple oscillators of the same wave. You can get up to 16 different ones playing at the same time, and they are slightly stereo and slightly off pitch from each other. So once you selected how many voices, you can affect how the stereo spread sounds, more stereo versus less, and you can also affect how detuned they are from each other. But that's lame. Where it gets interesting is this advanced tab. This will open up once you introduce some voices, and the first thing we're going to mess with are some stack modes. What these stack modes do is they pretty much change where the unison voices are tuned to. You see a lot of different modes, and I'm gonna pitch this up so we can hear it a little better. So the first one is center drop 12. It adds a lower octave to our sound. Center drop 24 adds two times lower octave, right? And then octave lays a higher octave, two times octave, twice as high an octave, then power chord, add some fifths, some higher fifths, and then major chord, makes me happy, minor chord, makes me very sad. But my favorites are the harmonics and odd harmonics, which sound the best when you add some deep bass notes, which I'm gonna do here. And this is where it gets interesting. So we can turn down this detune range, just so it's nice and pitched beautifully. And we can already select how many harmonics we're gonna hit right here, and D2 mode doesn't do anything because I turned down the range. Okay, to get the boring knobs out of the way, unison blend, that's like the dry wet, how much unison sounds are gonna be in the mix. Stereo unison is how stereo they are. Now to sauce it up further, we're gonna mess with these different spread knobs, which seemingly do nothing. But I lied, they actually do something. And it depends on, well, what the spread is. So table spread, what are tables, right? We know tables, we have wave tables, okay? And for a wave table, let's just pick our harmonic series. It's classic and it works really well for these sounds. So once we've selected a wave table, we can shift through the different frames to get different sounds, of course. But what this table spread does is it shifts through those frames, but spreads them across all your duplicated voices up to 16, right? And that's kind of insane. So you can have a lot of fun with that. You can tune it to your liking and get all sorts of different results. Onto the spectral spread. So if table spread messes with the wave table, spectral spread messes with the spectral knob. And for this, I'm gonna select the harmonic stretch. It just works well with these sine waves. And then we turn the spectral knob. You see it, it's tuning these individual voices to different parts of that knob percentage. And if that wasn't enough for you, we also have the dist spread, which affects this last knob here with the sync modes, all these different stretchy modes, and the FM. So let's just grab sync because it's easy. And yeah, 
already you are getting so many sounds never really heard before this is very fresh even to my ears and it's very cool but because vital is amazing we can just modulate all these to our liking look i'm gonna go crazy and make it jump around with some steps damn like any sound though we don't have to stop there with these unison this is just our initial voice and we can go in and start affecting it with some filtering i'm just gonna add make a basic wub here with this low pass and we're gonna drag this lfo here to wub it from there i'm feeling some chorus this is something i've been messing with a lot what the chorus does, it adds a bit of stereo and kind of its own detune effect. But I've been really liking it for this freeze. Which when it's frozen, the voices aren't moving around too much. They're frozen and it creates this really interesting metallic ringing. And with Vital's saucy chorus, it just sounds freaking cool, okay? Then of course, it wouldn't be dubstepy without a ton of multiband compression. Attack and release up makes it come across a little bit cleaner which I like. I like clean stuff. And our table is set. We have the crazy unison mode. We can add any effects and post-processing we want. Now let's dive into all these individual patches I've made. So our first patch is this really ringy kind of harmonic bass. And already this looks almost identical to the first thing I made. We're using this harmonic series. We have the voices up to five and the rest is going to be under this advanced tab. So I tuned it to harmonics just because I was liking how it sounded, you know, it's your personal preference. And I was just going for a kind of an octave, kind of ringy, full, like consonant sound, not too dissonant just yet. And we're messing with these different harmonics through the table spread, as well as this kind of spectral, spe spectral stretchy mode. Yeah, and I didn't really touch the disc spread. That's my least favorite. And effects, almost identical from the last one, except I was looking for some fatter sounds, so I added a bunch of distortion. Gets a fuller, bigger sound. And of course, low pass womp, I shaped to my personal preference. Do whatever, man. But that's just our first wub. And I messed it up, but copy the first things to get it right. Now let's show off this deeper sounding wub with a bit of delay on it. And what do you know, I use the same kind of standard-y template for this. Uh, 12 voices. Just because I liked it. You know, I was just trying to hit the right harmonics to get just the sound I wanted to hear. Here's the table spread stuff. Something I did mess with, which you hear at the second hit here. It's jumping this table spread around, which is a really easy way to add a clean variation. And of course, I mess with the spectral spread. And effects, standard, if it's a wub, it's got the low pass going. I wanted an even cleaner wub though, so I change it to this 24. And yeah, it gets it a lot, well, wubbier in a way. And for whatever reason, I was feeling weird. I wanted it to kind of be an atmospheric effect. So I added this delay, turned it to a quarter note. This affects how fast it goes. And so the low end was kind of staying out of it. You could just turn up this cutoff so the delay is just in the high end. So those were cool sounds, but now it's time to get weird with this ringy boy. And what do you know? Same stuff. I did end up turning this harmonic stretch kind of down before messing with it. And under the advance, I'm able to get this cool shifting effect by modulating this table spread. You see? And that's just sick. And of course, odd harmonics, different spectral spread to position. You get the idea. Standard effects, although I did make this womp kind of open over time for some more progressive movement. And I have this frequency faster. And because I'm crazy and wanted even more movement, I had this uh, mix increasing at the end to turn it kind of atmospheric and trippy -y towards the end. And before I show off these sounds, you might be wondering how and when I first played it, these were hitting all different notes, different tones every time. And for that, you see I'm just kind of shifting some of these parameters around. 
this stuff is very standard for variations, but I believe, what, what did I twist? I twisted this spectral spread and that's nice. And I do that subtly across all the bases, just add some more interest. Don't go too crazy on the variations though, but generally if you're tweaking knobs on the same patch, it will remain pretty cohesive. Now for this glitchier thick boy here. I got tired of the harmonic series, so I went with, what do you know, another harmonic series maybe? Maybe I lied, but I don't know, it's so suspenseful. Okay, I actually went with the saw wave, thank God. And I didn't touch this table spread for once. Where the majority of the interest is coming from is from this really crazy random amplitudes. It's just an insane spectral morph feature. And to avoid it from getting too crazy like it typically does, we can use this unison mode to essentially layer it on. Damn. So fat. And it gets glitchy through me turning this knob over time. And you see, it's hitting all these different tones, even this fat, wubbier one, just through messing with this knob alone. Yeah, I didn't really mess with a whole lot else. My other subtle automations and movements, this low pass, with this envelope, I have the decay kind of increasing to just give it a bit of an opening effect over time, which is cool. And just this subtle LFO amount, which does a little bit. And is also cool. Don't worry. I think that's also cool even if I don't say it. I know I haven't said that enough already. Anyways, rest of the effects, standard. Distortion makes it fatter, although it's kind of fat without it. But I was tired of these clean hyper real crisp glassy sounds give me some meat bro i swear okay another metallic -y, ringy wub here this time with a different basic shape you know me even when i'm messing with these crazy unison modes i stick to my basic shapes because the wave tables especially when they start to get tuned around pitched around can get a little messy but i'll talk about that more later um square wave harmonic stretch Bada bing, bada boom, different voices, different tones, different knobs, twists, different tones, effects, sauce, drip, swag. Okay, I did have the wub going, and I did have this, this LFO kind of opening, which just makes it a bit more dynamic, interesting of an effect, right? And a lot of these, I do have this chorus effect going, you know, the freeze, different delays depths get different sounds it's kind of crazy yeah but i kept it simple i didn't modulate a ton of stuff on all these just got a really interesting tone with these initial knobs with the disc spread doing nothing because i didn't want the fm with the fm it could sound like that but i don't know i didn't keep it for some reason even though it's kind of fat in retrospect okay i gotta slow it down here with some weirdness that just soothes the mind and to achieve such weirdness, I ended up duplicating this first weird boy. And, what do you know, tweaking him. I grabbed this quad saw wavetable here, which I liked because it's kind of like its own harmonic series, but for saw wave, but not really, and I, maybe I lied about that. But it's similar in that sense that it becomes fat. Advanced tab, right? I have a number of things automating. This table spread opening in the beginning and this spectral spread. Just dialing up the weirdness. That's the weirdness knob actually. And that is messing with this inharmonic. And that inharmonic gets that really ringy metallic cool sound that I like. I mean, if I didn't like them, they probably wouldn't be in this video. But wub, quarter, I mean, eighth note wub, ring metallic chorus. Reverb automation, same as before. And this grittier sound here, for whatever reason, I was feeling a noisy wub, but this doesn't have a whole lot to do with the unison modes. I'll be honest, guys. For this, I just duplicated this saw patch up here, but pretty much just changed the filter to open really low, only letting those lows and mids in. The rest doesn't matter too much because the beef of it, coming from this hiss Ableton preset, you know, if you want some white noise on stuff, that's what you do. Drag hiss on. Now for probably my favorite sound of this arrangement. And I'm guessing it's yours too because you like that weird type stuff. I know you so well, so I grabbed your favorite wavetable as well, the harmonic series. 
And this is a bit interesting. I didn't really show this off in the beginning, but I mentioned you could modulate these here. You can also modulate the amount of voices, which is essentially just going to be adding more harmonics all over the place. And boom, I added a pluck. And it just sounds jumpy and kind of clicky for some reason. But instead of being afraid of the jumps and clicks, I leaned into it with the glitch vibe. Um, under advanced though, there is a bit of sauce occurring, and that is this disc spread. For even further glitchiness, this disc spread is jumping around, which is tuning this sync up. So essentially it's just jumping up in pitch really fast. And those big jumps, as well as just general high pitch stuff, gives you that glitchy, robot -y, computer, future type beat vibe type. All right, now for the bonus sound, I didn't include in the arrangement because it was too gnarly and crazy. And for this sound, I just wanted to show how far you can push this unison mode to its limits with a kind of growly sound. So as a quick overview, you see this LFO is pretty much shaping everything. I have it on the wave table, I have it on the unison modes, I have it on every different table spread, every spectral spread, every distance spread. Right, which we're familiar with, but to take it to the next level, I have a second oscillator, which is also doing these effects, right? Subtly, but they're there. And this isn't necessarily a growl tutorial, but I'll quickly go over how to make these kind of growly sounds generally. Just get a nice, interesting shape. And to emphasize the growliness, we can add some high passes and notches because these high passes is what's going to add that vocally -e -ness, e ness Yeah, generally peaks moving like this and filters are going to give you that vocal character. To further emphasize it, I have this cutoff going back, but it is so slammed so we can reel it back in with this low pass. Nice and vocal, nice and crazy and I like it. And really, it's not rocket science in a lot of ways because I'm just messing with this sound until I find something that I think is fat and already we get a lot of different variations and we can keep messing with the shape. Damn. It's clearly a lot of fun and I hope you make some really crazy one-of-a-kind sounds. You better make them quick before everyone starts doing this, bro. I all right, hopefully everyone sticks to using their sine waves and harmonics instead of these saucy unison modes, which also use sine waves and harmonics, but maybe you can feel a bit cooler while doing it, I don't know. But what I do know is that if you leave a like, a comment, and subscribe if you haven't, that would help me out a lot. Plus a reminder that all these presets and project files, they're all up on the Patreon. Plus one more thing, if you want some sample packs or some one-on-one -on -one lessons or you just want to learn more about me, I have a website. Buntingmusic.com. Look, here's the packs. There's plenty, plenty of free and paid ones if you want to support me or just get some fat samples. And there's a whole lesson booking thing here if you're into that. There's also a Discord in the description where it's just a little online chat room community with like-minded dudes just like you and me who like Weird Bass. Join into that. Hang out with dudes. And I don't know. That's all the self-plugging I can do for today. I've reached my allowance. And what I'm going to say now is sincerely thank you for watching. I really appreciate your support. It really does mean the world to me to be able to do this pretty much full time, make these lovely videos, make fat sounds all freaking day. And I love you guys because of that. Keep creating, keep being cool and dripping swag.